All right. Um, good morning, everyone. And um, um, I'm Yoshi. And I, you might know me as AdninAW on Twitter. It's a Twitter to me, at least. And um, let me quickly introduce myself. I've been developing for Apple platform, especially for iOS, more than 10 years now. I started with Objective-C, and now mostly using Swift. Today, I wanted to talk about Swift UI and the curative API design using um, a camera app as our example. Um, it's perfect because camera API is kind of a traditional procedural way of API and not very decorative. And also, I want to warn you that um, this presentation contains a lot of code there. But don't worry. Um, I will share everything after the presentations on the GitHub. So don't, don't like, try to read the entire code in a very short video. Well, first, before beginning, I want to show some demo uh, of the camera app we are using in this presentation. So here is the camera app I made. And uh, it's because camera, I can take your photo. Uh, can we make it a little bit brighter? I don't know, but um, this app, can we switch camera like this? Or um, recording video? Yeah? And also, I can take the photo with you. Say, cheese. Uh, it's not a good photo, but anyways. <laughs> Let's go back to presentation. So. Let's dive in. To access these camera APIs on Apple platform, we need to use AV Foundation, and especially using the AV Capture Session. It's a simple three-step process to create uh, sessions and set up and capture. Uh, unfortunately, however, Apple haven't provided the Swift UI API yet. However, Apple does offer detailed interactive documentations, and um, let's take at what they recommend to use the camera API on the Swift UI. Uh, but it's actually a bit long, so uh, I've summarized it. The first, Apple suggests to placing everything in a stateful view model, then expose some methods like in Capture Photo and use app, uh, app published property wrapper to handle the callback, like you know, getting photos taken. Does make sense, and uh, it works. So conclusion, encapsulate everything in a view model and use it from your view. That's it. Um, that's how that was recommended and how to use a Swift, uh, camera API from the US Swift UI. Um, uh, thank you for listening. And any questions? Uh, no, of course not. <laughs> well, actually, that approach works. And uh, it's valid API design and no argument there. But uh, what if we take a step back a little bit and ask, can we design something that feels more even Swift UI like? Uh, something more seamless with Swift UI world? Let's go back to the three steps process of using camera. What if those three steps could be embedded in within the Swift UI view? So if we use the camera world to feel much more natural in Swift UI? So uh, let's examine these three steps. The first, uh, create an every capture session. Before we see how to do this in a Swift UI, um, let's clarify something. A Swift UI view is not a view in a traditional sense. Honestly, the view is, I, I feel like it's a misleading name. Uh, Swift UI view is not a UI instance, and um, it's just a, a structure of the application. I think it's like a, more like a JSON or YAML. Once we understand that, uh, we realize something's very powerful. A Swift UI container view can represent a kind of like a feature scope in the application, like for us, like the session of the, the, the using the camera. Let me show how it looks like in a code. This is a very basic container view. Like you, you pass the container view, content view to the container view. So if this view holds a session object, it now represents a queer feature scope. No, yeah, we are using the every capture session here. But it's that not simple, because Swift UI view is just like a JSON. Uh, we have to think about like a lifetime of it. When the session starts and when it's end. Remember that Swift UI view is a struct, not a class. So it is recreated very frequently, meaning that initializers and all like you know, the property values is actually called just as often. 
But uh, there's a trick. CCUI maintains internal kind of identity. It's explicitly or implicitly for each view. Uh, similar, it's like a reference pointer in a UI kit. And uh, that identity lifetime is long. And uh, the famous at state property wrapper is actually use that identity to extend the uh, property values lifetime to match to the identity lifetime. So back to the code. With that at state, our session object would decreated every time, and which is not matching like the actual lifetime we want to have that session. So let's add that state. Uh, that should work, right? Uh, it's actually not quite, because at state only preserves the values that the first time they see. Um, and after that, it's actually keep creating new value and then discarding it. So if it's a kind of value like in you know, a Boolean or the integer or you know, optional value, it's, it's initialized as a nil, um, it's not a big deal, but the, our session object is a capture session, which is a heavy lifting object, um, it's not ideal. So we need to one more trick. We can use a boxing class uh, with out closure to delay the control one time initialization. So here is uh, how the code looks like. Uh, it's very simple, like a few lines of code. And uh, with this setup, we ensure the session is created only once, and now the session lifetime matches to the feature scope. So this is a uh, quick summary. Safety so view is an a view. Uh, it's kind of like an application structure. And uh, a content view can represent a feature scope and um, use at state property wrapper uh, with the uh, controlled initializations and managing lifetime. Great, now we have a session. Uh, let's move on, um, step two. Uh, we want to setting up input, output, and preview uh, for the camera session. AB Foundation gives us a variety of input and output, like you know, cameras, mic, and the preview layer, and you know, taking a photo and a recording video, and then uh, let us to connect each these nodes. And in a procedural way, we usually configure all these things in a step, in a single, like, in a configure session, whatever that's method. But uh, what if we treat these configurations in a Swift UI? Since Swift UI view represent application structure, so we could actually represent that configuration within the view as well. Then use this configuration to set up the session. Um, here's a session view, right? And then inside it, we declare the preview and uh, capture output, and both configured for the uh, sorry, uh, yeah, and then both configured for the back camera. Uh, this structure describes like how the camera should set up. And uh, now come the challenge, like you know, how we correct these configurations, all configurations represented as a view, as a child view, uh, so the, to, to configure the session. We need to gather these information from child view, right? And then um, the parent view, here is a, a capture session, wanted to see how the child looks like. Um, to do so, the Swift UI has a very not well known solution named the preference key. Uh, it lets child views send values up to the, uh, the view tree of the parent view. So here's an example. This is a simple preference key. We assign the value to it and each child view. And this reduce function corrects these values and into the uh, single array, for this case, the value. Um, each view can use the um, dot preference like this modifier to send that value. And then the parent view, and in our case is the capture session, <coughs> use the uh, <coughs> own preference change to, to receive this M. Um, with this setup, now we can accumulate all these preferences which presented as a child view. Uh, so um, let's see how it works um, more or kind of got easy understanding for dimension. Like, uh, so the preview view here has a configuration. So and it's send it to the, it is preference, like you know, we, we are under preview for the back camera. And then here's the output view, and it sends also the configuration too, and that it gets added as well, like say we wanna capture the back camera as well. 
and then on the parent view, capture session, receives all these combined configurations as uh, on change, on preference change. Now we have all configurations, but um, since Swift, view, Swift UI is declarative, these can be changed. And uh, this change could happen multiple times, like you know, when users switching the back camera to front camera, the update, uh, update is called. So we need to handle these changes very intelligently. So here's a simple, I think it's simple, <laughs> but it's not perfect actually, example. Uh, rather than resetting everything when we change the value, uh, we need to check which configuration is changed in each time, and then update as only what we need. Um, this kind of like a taking the difference between the things like previous change to the next change is a key idea you know, like how the declarative API should be defined. So this is uh, one of the, the things like we need to very care about like to ha have these APIs. So with this approach, configuration is, um, can be declared as a view in the view tree and using preference key helps these uh, various configurations accumulating it to the uh, parent view and then also implement the logic, taking care of like a diffs to help like a uh, very efficient way to reconfigure the, the session. So um, last step, uh, we need to trigger the capture and get a photo back. Without that, that's, it doesn't work anything and it's very useful, uh, useless cam uh, app. Um, these are very uh, kind of a procedural tasks and they're not declarative, so we need to have a kind of extra caution. The Swift UI actually only allows procedural code in a very specific areas, like the actions for the buttons, or on change, no, or on receive, or that task. A very few other things uh, exist, like you know, gestures, but mostly like it's very limited areas we can write the code, the procedural code. So we need to uh, write uh, the, the, these procedural things uh, within these constraints. So first, trigger the actions, like in taking photo, we need to use a proxy object. This object is passed to the child views and let them perform actions inside the closure. So in our example, the capture output get a proxy object and which passed into it is the content view, which is a child view. In a child content view, um, we get the proxy object here and um, call the method on the proxy uh, inside the uh, button action. So this is one of the few places we can write the procedural code. So now we trigger the capture action. So next thing is that we want to call, uh, get back to the photo. Um, uh, however, it's kind of a annoying thing that uh, most API using Crozier for the callback, but as a Swift language design, the Crozier is not degradable, nor are the pointer comparable, which means that it can't take any difference between these two. It's changed or not, we don't know. So uh, it's very anomaly, it's kind of anomaly things that exist in the Swift UI, the Crozier. So our option is very limited. The one approach is avoid use a closure entirely. Don't use a closure, just use it in sync. Um, or uh, use kind of a callback value with on change or on receive. This is very limited things we can do with it. So here's how. We trigger capture using async, handle like, you know, resulting line. And it keeps everything within the uh, procedural scope that is in button action, so, you know, it is, avoiding the closure issues from the beginning. So the summary, uh, use a proxy to trigger the actions and use async handler to the callbacks and uh, that's, that's so that we can you know, stay within the Swift UI procedural safe areas. All right, now really that's it. Um, today we explore a way to build the Swift UI API uh, using camera features as our example. And key takeaway is like this. Swift UI view is kind of like a structure of your application. It's not like the actual view, your, your, your mental model, like in the Swift uh, UI kit view. Instead, it's more likely close to the JSON YAML. 
And we can use the preference key to gather the structure from the uh, child view so that we can you know, configure the situations changed. And uh, use a proxy object and also the async function to perform actions and get the callback. And always when we write the logic within the SWIFT UI, uh, think about like what the change changed and taking the diff and then do kind of got very efficient things to it. And at last, um, this is not the only way to build the APIs. Like Apple's recommendations, like using everything, like put everything in the view model. This is also the great way. Um, I think it is no doubt like it is one of the way to API design. But um, I think this presentation helps you to have kind of a new design that you have never tried on the Swift UI. So these uh, camera app and the full implementation of code available here. Uh, you may want to capture it. Uh, it's called, called the Capture UI. I've just published on the GitHub. And you can you know, clone it, build it, then try it. Maybe create issues or pull requests, whatever. Um, so thank you for listening. <laughs>